Hi everyone, my name is Mike Samaring. I work for a company called Futurize. And uh, we are going to talk uh, today about uh, cross-platform mobile UIs. And uh, it's a quite lightweight topic. And uh, we are not going to have too much of the technical details. And uh, let's have a questions in the end. And then let's see how it will go. Uh, first of all, what I'm going to have is um, we're going to have three topics. And uh, the first topic, uh, general thoughts of, on uh, cross-platform UIs. And uh, we have quite a lot of experience of doing all kinds of mobile platforms and all kinds of web platforms. And uh, I think it's worth sharing at least some thoughts on our, especially our recent experience with the cross-porting the same mobile application that definitely is going to face consumers to some other platforms. The second topic for today is to take a look at the use case scenario as uh, the mobile applications that we did specifically for this event, Qt Developer Days, and the mobile uh, scheduler. And uh, the third topic for today will be what kind of help you can get uh, from Nokia when you are targeting multiple platforms, whether you are trying to port your app from Nokia platforms from to, to, to some other platforms or from other platforms to Nokia. Uh, one question, there was a, this light off last in the, back. In, in the back because it's really making it. And I think maybe even more. No. OK. So these are topics uh, for today. Who is, by the way, using a mobile application for uh, scheduling today? At least some, some people. So there is a, a mobile application and mobile website, so you don't have to carry your paper agenda. And uh, you can get it from NFC tags or from uh, Ovi Store. And it's actually pretty handy for um, scheduling the, um, your sessions for today. OK, but let's go on. Who we are, the company called uh, Futurize. And uh, we've been around for, for a while. Uh, we are 11 years old company. We have huge amount of experience with doing all kinds of development. We are essentially outsourcing house, and we work with the media houses, and we work with the operators, we work with the uh, device vendors, and uh, we have uh, two locations currently in Finland and in Germany, and we have a huge amount of people, 150 people working, and uh, we do enormous amount of applications. For example, in my team alone, in average, we do approximately 70 mobile projects uh, per two years, and most of these applications are going to face the consumers. Uh, unfortunately, extremely rarely we see our name on those applications because we are subcontractors. But uh, nevertheless, we've gathered so much experience in all kinds of uh, applications. And uh, uh, the last year, when we were speaking at QDev Days, our prime example of what we were doing with the Qt at that time, with the Q widget, was uh, WordPress. And uh, it's open source project that we're, we have created it, and we were major contributors. And since then, there was a really crazy year, uh, including the, the announcement of the major platform shift uh, for Nokia and some uncertainties about the future of Qt. And at the same time, we saw enormous amount of development activities. And during the past year, we have created huge amount of Qt applications. And only few of them are our official public references. And I can give you a glimpse. For example, we were doing for Nokia and Disney the Tron Legacy uh, uh, mobile trivia application for movie fans, the Nokia trailers application. Uh, for example, Transformers 3, a uh, trivia app. These are all Qt apps. For example, Transformers is done 100% with QML. 
the WRC Live with the four racing fans, uh, totally graphics view based application that works on uh, Harmattan and it works on the Symbian. And uh, of course, especially now with uh, that many apps that we have to support and maintain, we have to cross port them to many other platforms. And this is our like a tip of the iceberg that we are doing. But at the same time, we are facing exactly the same problems where then like most of you, if you are doing any kind of cross porting or you are planning to release your applications to some new markets. And we came to a conclusion that uh, there are actually tiny, tiny amount of small rules that we have to follow. And uh, because of our experience in this uh, area, we've decided that we really have to share them. And then just illustrate you that no matter how big you are in terms of the company size, or if you're just a one-man show company, we are facing exactly the same problems. And the first problem regarding mobile porting that we are facing, uh, the, actually the, the question is, does it actually exist, the mobile porting? Because who is doing Android apps? Who is doing iPhone apps? And who is doing, uh, let's say, who is doing cute apps? Okay, and now think about it. You take an iPhone application and you have to port it to Windows Phone. Can we really say that we are porting application to Windows Phone? What we are going to do? We are going to most probably do complete rewrite. And uh, then, because the only real cross-porting is OpenGL ES. So if we have an OpenGL ES application, we can basically almost with minimal effort, with different kind of wrappers, we can run it on Symbian, Android, and uh, iPhone, except, for example, Windows Phone. Etc. 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 So in the end, we are facing the the question: Can we actually call it porting, or would it be a better term for this work that we have to do anyway? Is migrating our code base to another platform? Because if I have to rewrite almost 100% except the small amount of graphical assets, can I really call it a porting? And then one of the customers is telling us that, hey. No porting ever took them more than a couple of weeks, and we are facing the major rewrite of our application. And uh, based on this, there are a few rules that are quite apparent, and, uh, but nevertheless, rule number one, let's take a look at this video. If you look upstairs, we handed us this one, and we gotta come through. We gotta find a way to make this Fit into the hole for this, using nothing but that. Let's get it This fragment from Apollo 13, and I'm using this fragment for a couple of months to illustrate to, to a management of our customers when we are talking about porting. The company is coming to us and say, here is our code base, we would like you to port it to this platform. And basically, we're facing uh, taking the square pegs, trying to put them to the round holes, and using the tools that are completely inappropriate for this specific task. And uh, that's why we decided that actually, and we, we have to deliver it to the customers that rewrite is okay. And, uh, in the long run, you will realize that maintaining exactly the same code base and trying to artificially stretch it to other platforms, it doesn't do you any good. And let's face it, mobile applications are tiny, 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 comparing to like a huge amount of like enterprise software that we have to do. And the average lifetime of mobile application is, it, we can measure it sometimes in months. Do we have, and there are only like handful of examples of the mobile apps that we can stretch across the many platforms and have a significantly longer lifetime that we can measure in years. And uh, the, the favorite example in this respect would be uh, 
John Carmack from ID Software, he, he has, if you Google for his quotes about the rewrites, it is totally okay to do rewrites because it gives you a cleaner code, ba code base. <laughs> Plus, one of the major achievements is that the network play or network engine in the ID software uh, titles was because the John Carmack was stuck trying to, was it, I don't remember, was it original Doom or was it the original Quake with network play? He was stuck trying to write a proper code with TCP IP, a huge amount of spaghetti code that he managed to tell to himself, stop dump the code, rewrite everything in few hundreds of lines with UDP, and that's it. That's exactly the thing that we are facing many times. Sometimes it's much better to do a complete rewrite. And uh, another aspect of that, who remember times of the 8-bit computers? Who had Atari? Okay, Commodore 64. Uh, the Rare Beast, BBC Micro. No, ZX Spectrum. I had soldered, I have soldered myself four of those. So the thing is why I, I brought this example because I was shocked recently to learn that, for example, just for ZX Spectrum, for pre-internet days, there were more than 20,000 software titles distributed on tapes. And the same guys had to do it with the complete code rewrite to all other 8-bit platforms, including Commodore 64 and Atari and all other crazy platforms. And they didn't die, they survived. So, and now we are, with our, all these super refactoring tools and the helpers, we are complaining, oh, I have to port these 20 lines of my code to another platform. And... Uh, the world hasn't changed, it just it got a little bit bigger, but exactly like it was like 20 years ago and 15 years ago, it's exactly the same now. Then, learn the fact that if technology doesn't fit, really don't force it. Because in the end, uh, what we have observed that we have a lot of developers in our company, and of course, each developer has their preferred technology. And we have a tendency to drug this technology, whether it's appropriate, or not, agree? And we have to really face the question, who the person we're doing the software for? Bob, Oof. I broke it. So is it me or is it my customer? And if I will try to use my favorite library or API at the expense of the customer or at the expense of my user, great, thank you. I, I promise I will not touch it anymore. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and in the end, we, I mean, I found this picture, but that's, that's a real picture. So we are trying to drug the horse with the car, and it, 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 it's, it's not going to do any good. And then face the fact that the best user experience will be always provided by a native platform toolkit. I have a great respect to Aspen with the previous talk, but if I would like to force uh, technology that is not appropriate to the platform, like me personally, for my own products, I wouldn't use the alien framework instead of native toolkit. Because um, the customer will not benefit from it, and uh, we use a lot, uh, for example, a phone gap. Who knows what is phone gap? At least some people. And uh, in the end, we are just trying to save our own time. We are not trying to make the better products with the, for, for, the, for the consumers. And uh, the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges that we are facing with the mobile software is uh, screen size. And it's challenging because we have to recreate the uh, graphical assets, for example, for landscape and portrait or, or and for different screen sizes. But what is most challenging, and especially today at Nokia World, is the navigational model. And I would like to take uh, the following example, a Windows Phone. Uh, who is familiar with Windows Phone navigation model? 
with the back and stuff. So basically, you can do, you can navigate between the different screens, but you cannot jump because it will break the navigation stack. It means that if I've created my software with Qt with multiple screens, I will have to have a really, really hard time explaining to my customer why I have to completely redo it if I'm trying to migrate or port the same application to Windows Phone. And we just have to accept the fact that we are going to explain this many, many times. And another important thing that we've learned, if you do have possibility to uh, have a design, separate design guys, they really have to sit in the same team, in the same room. We've learned it hard way many, many times. Uh, we've been working with design houses that are working across the ocean or across the sea. And uh, unless we drag them, sit together with engineers, the results are not going to be good. And uh, even in our company, when we have a designer sitting at the different part of the buildings, it, it's not right. We really have to put them, sit in the same room with the uh, software engineers. And another very important aspect, if you take a look at the, most of the topics at this conference and in many other conferences, we are talking, most of the topics are somehow talking, talking about design. Design this, or design that, how to do this kind of design, right? So, in a, in a year or two, we immediately became super design heavy. And what we've seen, because we are quite deep in this area, what we've seen that we are starting to become too design heavy. So the design department or UX is becoming a god to the extent that it's like total the swipe to the other direction from where software engineer was a god doing everything himself, turns out to be perfect software that ugly, to absolutely beautiful software that nobody can use because it just doesn't work. And why is that? Because this, this is uh, symbios. It's supposed to be symbios. The, the best designers that we have, they have uh, the past software engineering degree and, uh, and the vice versa. The guys who are coming to software engineering, they have some kind of design backgrounds. And uh, that was the, a little bit of general part. And as the use case, I would like to go through this um, scheduling up uh, that we started discuss about this application uh, back in summer that it would be great if for a change for super high-tech conference instead of uh, paper uh, agendas we would actually have a mobile app for that and we went through very interesting uh, challenges in this application that I would like to share with you in the following few slides uh, if you haven't tried this agenda, there is almost one and a half day of conference where you can enormously benefit. So just try and find it from the, you can go to, if you have a Symbian, sorry, device, or, or if you have a, a Harmatan device, you can go to Ovi Store and search for Qt Developer Days. It's going to be there. Or you can go and find uh, the mobile web app uh, for all the rest plot of the platforms. That's how application look like and there are lots of features and I just briefly run this uh, uh, video where we can see all the days that we have. We can go into individual tracks. We can, for example, take a look at the, where exactly the, it's uh, located. We can give uh, the feedback and uh, there are quite many nice features and uh, we've decided to do it completely with Qt, of course, and uh, to use uh, some of the new technologies and uh, we discovered several underwater stones also that would be nice to see. But first, let's start from the design, of course, because we are now design-heavy people. Uh, 
we start drawing all kinds of design concept back in summer for this application. And actually, I'm going to show you these are the actual original design codes, uh, concept from our, uh, from our team. And as you've noticed, it doesn't look exactly like it looks right now. One of the major things we were thinking about the vertical orientation and uh, our customer or our partners and friends from Qt, they said that, hey, no, we don't want it. We want really to have the horizontal. And it brought a whole bunch of the challenges, how to do that. And uh, if you see, we, we, went, we were thinking about a totally different navigational concept with the back buttons the, on top and stuff like that. Uh, but in general, the application looked pretty much uh, at least on the paper or on the slides, it looked pretty much like it, uh, it works right now. We were thinking about doing all kinds of the landscape and portrait orientations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then when we start diving into the code, uh, certain technical decisions uh, led us to change the concept. And uh, one of the things we wanted to keep, because we know that N9 is coming to the store, so we wanted to keep the N9 style of the design and kind of Symbian, Symbian Bell stylish also. And uh, it means that we have to do everything manually or alternatively, uh, Qt components were released. So we decided to do it with Qt components. And automatically it would give us the native look and feel on Symbian and N9 as the uh, uh, this uh, new Nokia style. And uh, also we decided to not force technology where it doesn't belong to, meaning that we originally we actually considered it doing exactly what Aspen was describing in the previous talk, try to make the application uh, work on Android. And, uh, but we faced some challenges that prevented us doing that. And then we decided that for the rest of the platforms, we're going to use the mobile web. And this is actually also a nice message to you that it's a valid, totally valid choice if you are deciding to do the cross-platform application. And in those platforms that you cannot do native, you just do the mobile web and don't force it as the application. And uh, also, of course, we realize that we are not the only company that is trying to do the uh, scheduling application for the conference. They got to be uh, uh, some standard how we save the conference data. And we found there is a pentabarf. It's a standard, kind of standard, or a solution how to keep the conference data. And uh, we decided to use it, but then we realized that for events like this, the uh, provided pentabarf XML is not, it's, it's not good enough. Uh, it doesn't scale the way and doesn't do what we want to do. So we've designed based on this our own custom XML. And that pretty much picture of the engine of the application. And uh, for most QML-based applications, you can actually take this picture and design the application exactly like this. Uh, keeping in mind one important thing, if you're doing a dead simple application that just fetches some data from the web and displays it in a like, linear form, we're talking about all variety of RSS readers, et cetera, et cetera, where you do not need complex network engine then you can do pretty much absolutely everything in QML. You don't have to think about that. But in this case, we knew that we're going to have uh, some challenges with the networking, and we know that the updates are going to be pushed in the random time, and we want to, to make it totally outside of the UI thread. So the separation was totally clean. The whole UI is uh, QML-based, so Qt components, XML list models and JavaScript data models. And on the C++ side, we decided to do the whole network part. We decided to not do anything from QML and from JavaScript regarding the networking. And for integrating with the social networks, uh, and Facebook and Twitter, 
we decided to put it also to the C++ part. And in terms of application internals, what we decided to use just uh, XML list model to keep all the data and simplify to make it really that simple parsing of the uh, XML that comes from uh, our backend. And the JavaScript data models, we decided to do for simplicity. There is a tendency also to make all kinds of uh, C++ based data models, but in this specific case, they are simple enough and there is really no need to write C++ code in this respect. And the network I.O. in C++, major uh, deciding factor was to make it robust, do not block UI, and because we had pretty bad experience before with blocking UI on all kinds of uh, cute media applications, so we decided robust networking has to be done natively in C++, especially because of the threading. So we can do whatever we want in the background and we don't have to think about UI. And uh, then some challenges that we have. Uh, for Twitter-Facebook integration, we decided to use the web view. And it, it's, it, it's not that good on Symbian, let's let put it this way. It eats up huge amount of memory and it doesn't look good and, but this is something that we have to face. And uh, the text rendering on Symbian, I'll show you some demo, comparing, for example, to Harmaton, to uh, N9, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't look good, and especially if you start playing with the uh, rotating of the text. And uh, third-party APIs for launching, for example, maps, they simply do not exist on Symbian. You can do that on Harmatan, but then it means that the, the whole part will not be functional on Symbian. So this is as of today. Let's see what's gonna be next, but as of today, these are the limitations that we're gonna have. And take a look at these screenshots. We did the application for Symbian with cute components, and. Uh, it looked like it is now, but this is a first run on Harmatan. If you've noticed that we have huge buttons here and the microscopic texts, and it, it, it looks plain ugly. And this is something that is totally not usable. And uh, this is something that you have to be prepared if you are hoping that in a one shot you'll do without any tweaking application jumps between uh, Symbian and Harmatan with cute components, that's not gonna be the case. However, regardless of this uh, layout problems, let's put it this way, the application works pretty nice and smoothly. There are no other major problems. So all we had to do to find the way how to tell Harmatan why the components are rendered that ugly. And then we found out very interesting things that's pretty very good to keep them in your books. Let's talk a little bit about Harmaton UI optimization. So, buttons from Qt components, by default when you put them, they like take almost like 70% of the DUI width as their default width. Let's hope it will gonna be changed, but this is what, what today. And the, the normal behavior that you would expect that it will do something according to its content, it simply doesn't work yet. So this is something to be aware of. And as the solution was, uh, for example, in the toolbars, we found that, for example, tool button doesn't work properly, but if you use, for example, tool icon, then it will pick up the proper look and feel. And uh, in order to scale images, because we were not able actually to specify properly the, the uh, sizes of the buttons, we used all kinds of old-fashioned tricks where you put the invisible images and labels into the content, and then using the, for example, the painted width to force back the uh, sizes of the buttons. And so, but guys, you have to be, like, I, I, I see some of the people are like, uh, <laughs> comparing to what you would have to do if you would do it for example, with the graphics view in terms of the 
making everything absolutely custom. This is not still major customization. Once you know what you're doing, it's going to be OK. Then some other things. Uh, there is an enormous difference between what text sizes are like legitimate on Symbian and on Harmattan. And it means that you just have to find out what are those text solutions that look great on each platform and just force them uh, based on the platform. You cannot use the same text, like, uh, like some virtual definition, and force it across the platform. It's just not going to work. They don't match. And for example, the scroll bars and selection list item, they are totally missing from Harmatta at the moment. Again, we were advised for this conference to bring to developers what is happening right now. So it doesn't exist yet. It means that what we have to do, we have to, on Harmatan for specific dialogues, we have to create them totally custom. And luckily, QML is very simple and elegant, so it didn't take long, but these kind of things are a bit of like a surprise. And in general, in terms of UI uh, optimization, what we found that if you're trying to use, as of today, again, the uh, Qt components, the default initialization in the, in the first QML page, it's going to be really slow. We're talking about like, I don't know, five seconds startup time on Symbian or even longer. And uh, if you do it like with the brute force approach, that's going to be like this. But luckily, there are certain tricks how to do that. There is a very nice uh, guidelines at uh, harmatandevnokia.com how you can force uh, dedicated splash screen while you're doing all this stuff uh, in the background. And of course, it doesn't apply for uh, Symbian. And on Symbian, what you can do, you can create the dummy QML as the static splash screen. And immediately after the startup, do the single start timer that will force your actual main QML to the, as the main view. And uh, as you can see, still, with the same technology that's supposed to work on, like, uh, with a single shot on multiple platforms, we still have quite a lot of work to do. And uh, the best developer's friend is Git in this respect. And there are certain scenarios how we are using it. So we are keeping as separate branches the uh, source for different platforms and then merging them as needed, or alternatively, you do all development in one branch as your major platform, and then you have a separate branches uh, for different platforms. And uh, I'd like you to also to show the difference in rendering between, uh, for example, Symbian and Harmattan. Can we have HDMI, please? So this is coming from my E7, this application. And uh, we are at this time, and this is a correct. And as you can see, this whole view, of course, there are not ready-made components. And it was very interesting and nice, actually, challenge. Try to do that with the, this is all, these are all custom, uh, custom QML code. And uh, it works OK. If you see, there's a little bit of jerkness, but that's basically uh, the, uh, what we can get with the current Symbian performance. And uh, if you go inside, let's see some tricks in here. For example, this topic. And uh, you can have the map where it's running. And uh, you can read about speaker, for example. And uh, now watch this. I'm trying to do the uh, Twitter authentication. And then I don't know if network, OK, yeah, there is, it's, tr it's trying to connect to a network. But uh, the, let's see if the web view will appear or if network completely gone in this building. OK, it's here. And that's the web view, as we see. And most of the slowness was not actually about the network. It was just trying to bring the web view on Symbian. OK, I'll go back. 
And uh, take a look at these dialogues. All these dialogues in here, these are using Qt components, and these are actually very nicely done and implemented. You unfortunately probably don't see there is a nice scroll bar. And this is something that's probably going to be missing. And uh, also, for example, this back button that I'm hitting that is appropriate on Symbian, but it will be totally un inappropriate on, on Harmattan. OK, that was the running application on Symbian. Let's try to switch to, uh, to analog. Unfortunately, this doesn't have, this is N9, it doesn't have the HDMI. Is there any way you can do something about that? Can you do something with this picture? OK. Mm. Well, at least we can then enjoy, in a rotated view, the speed of movement on Harmattan, that it's, it's actually pretty much very, very nice. <laughs> OK. I understand it's going to be pretty difficult to see how it looks like, but for example, I just try to bring some dialogues, the same dialogues that you saw. We had to do all kinds of custom dialogues in here. Okay, let's then, let's go back to laptop. So, uh, you can play with the N9 after the, uh, after the, uh, a presentation, but uh, it's, uh, you, you can see how actually smooth and how nice the text rendering on, on Harmattan comparing to Symbian, and, but that, that's fact. Okay, and of course we're looking for improving the application, and uh, if there are any feedback, it would be nice to have them, and we're going to probably reuse it, this application on all kinds of different uh, other um, events. And the last topic I would like to talk today is about uh, help that you can get from Nokia Developer Organization if you are thinking about cross-porting your application. Uh, there is a special portal, and uh, Marco Argenti was talking about that today. There are some news today, what you can do there at uh, Nokia. And uh, it's... Uh, Pretty high at the hierarchy. It's not buried deep inside. There is a special sex section regarding porting, and where you can have quite a lot of material uh, porting back and forth be be between iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, and uh, there is enormous amount of documentation and the guides, including the how to take the navigation model of your, for example, iPhone application and take it to, to another operating system. And there is a huge amount of super useful code samples that you can find in there. And uh, a lot of these code samples are done for several platforms, so you can take a ready-made code and compare it on different platforms. And uh, as one of the examples, uh, there is a great guide how to do the iOS to Quick, where we can go, you can see the, for example, navigational models and very specific cases how to port this to one or another platform. And uh, uh, one of the very interesting tools that you can get now is so-called API mapping tool. Let's see to API mapping tool. For example, there are three sesh sections for the iPhone, Android, and as of yesterday evening, there is a new session for Windows Phone, where you have most of the, for example, in this case, iPhone kits with the APIs, and you can jump directly to documentation for the iPhone, and at the same time, uh, it's equivalent at Qt. This is super useful tool, 
if you are not familiar with the all platforms at the same time, to uh, familiarize yourself with this or that. And for example, exactly the same for Android and with certain advices and tools. And uh, it's actually there, for, for a Windows phone, and there are very nice uh, scripts that are running in the background that are actually fetching the latest uh, information from MSDN. And uh, you can search for specific classes and words, and it will bring you directly to the documentation. And uh, for example, it gets you to MSDN. And this tool went live, as I mentioned, uh, yesterday evening. And this is something that Marco was talking today at a keynote. And there are lots of examples. And this is something that you definitely should be aware of. For example, this, uh, like a searching for list box and uh, jumping to a specific documentation and QML and uh, the Windows phone. So these are the helpers that you can get and good tools. Hope that you will find use for that. And uh, thank you very much. Hope you would have some questions. I have uh, members of our team, Osmo and Juha, if there are any technical questions regarding the actual implementation details. And also, we're going to have a very nice session at 5 o'clock, where we're going to talk about the, uh, how we were making transformers and Tron and WRC Live and what does it mean when you have to deal at the same time with the movie studio and uh, Nokia at the other hand, and on top of that, the technical challenges trying to make it perform on the giving a platform. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, uh, is it on? Um, I have the feeling that we are now in a situation with the mobile market where software development has been about 25 years ago. You have like, like you've shown on the one picture, like lots of different devices, and every device has its own way to be programmed. Yep. And so you are suggesting to just use the, um, yeah, the tools that you get from the vendors. But well, my my expectation was to. Um, to learn about how to, yeah, how kind of Qt um, became a um, cross-platform development toolkit for different computer systems or OSs. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, to learn about how Qt could be implemented or used to be, um, or to write uh, software for all these mobile devices. So, but what I've learned from your um, talk is rather that you shouldn't do that. You just should stick with what you get from the vendors. Yeah, in terms of the, that's a good and very valid question. In terms of the uh, cross-platformness of the Qt, you use Qt on the platforms where it's uh, supported. And between these platforms, of course, you can, as you've seen, there is still enormous amount of work that you have to do to optimize for different screen sizes and navigation models and to uh, like overcome the layout issues, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, one thing that we would like to share also that too, that people would understand that there is no Qt on iPhone. It's not going to be there ever. There is no Qt on Windows phone. And it's not going to be there. So we don't have to live in denial that someday it will come. It will not come. There's no like technical problems in that. And for example, that was the, the uh, one of the, uh, some microsystems, they had the mobile Java running on the iPhone in a few days after the uh, native SDK release. Because it's a Unix. There is nothing special in there. So, but it's not there. It's, and it's not going to be there. So this is one of the things that we have to learn and just as the fact. If there are tools that allow you to do cross-platform development, this is great. But in the end, you're going to use the native toolkit.
Thank you. Yeah. Please. Yes. So when was the point when you decided for branches instead of, let's say, compile time switching or something? Was it really the different interfaces of uh, components? Actually, uh, the uh, cross-testing that was, for example, if you do the one major branch for one platform, and you do all the testing in there, for example, for Symbian, right? And then after each merging, trying to, to uh, retest, for example, on the Harmaton and retest on Symbian. Yeah, why not? I mean, you introduce bugs, which you just postpone. Um, if you postpone the merger, you postpone finding the pain. Or you don't merge. Or you don't merge. Yeah. That, as I said, that was the second uh, solution. You do one major branch as the, your, how do we call it, master branch. And then you just, after that, you're forking the branches and then just do the testing in the respected branches. And you see no way of getting into one code line and... Yeah, we, from time to time, well, I, I believe we, we did have uh, merges, but you also should understand that still, for this specific application, we are talking essentially about just two platforms. That's not such a big deal for retesting. But if you have more, then that's going to be a major problem. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot. Have a great conference.